Hi everybody, happy Thursday. I am so happy to see you here. Um, I will wait for a few minutes um, for people to pop on. But today I am um, happy that it's almost the weekend. Um, I can't believe that July is coming to an end, that we are already hitting August of 2020. The years go by faster and faster the older I get. My parents always told me this and I never believed them, um, but they were absolutely right. Um, having kids speeds up time and you grow fast, your kids grow fast, and time goes by way too quickly. Um, anyway, today I am on talking to you guys about helicopter parents and snowplow parents. And so we are gonna determine if you fall under one of these categories or not based on the descriptions and the discussion that we're having today. And so if you are listening or you are watching the video after the fact, then I would love for you to let me know in the comments at the end if you are able to determine whether or not you fit under one of these categories. So let's talk first helicopter parents. Now, helicopter parents have been around for a little longer than the term snowplow parents. And helicopter parenting is really, and I'm sure many of you have heard of it, um, it's really about you hovering and saving them and being there to make sure they don't fall at the playground and being right underneath of them as they slide so that they don't accidentally bump their bum. And while they're toddling around and learning to walk, you're right there ready to catch them so that they don't fall um, when they're at school and they're struggling, you're in there meddling, your nose is in there, and you are in there talking to the teacher constantly, trying to resolve issues instead of giving them space to uh, learn conflict conflict resolution. Um, you're basically kind of afraid to let them go because you're afraid they're going to have a bump, a bruise, a hurdle, um, something that's upsetting to them. And what happens when we helicopter parent is we rob them, literally rob them of learning life lessons. And our kids learn life lessons by having bumps and bruises and bumps in the roads and having to jump those hurdles. We don't learn life lessons by somebody saving us all the time. And so if you are saving your kids from every single ouch or bump or bruise, then you're actually robbing them the opportunity be to become independent adults who can manage what life throws their way. So I often think about helicopter parents about the story and I share the story a lot when I do workshops about when my son was in grade one. And he was a really, he is still a very studious old soul and he is a rule follower and he does not want to get in trouble and he wants to do the right thing at school and at home and it's just in his blood. And it was a morning where he took out his agenda, which he had to bring back and forth to school every day. And he took it out because he wanted to study his words, which is amazing in itself. But he left the agenda on the coffee table. And in our house, we have the rule that you pack your bag, you pack your water bottle, and when you're ready, we'll go. Well, he had taken it out, which was, like I said, so great that he was studying, but he left it. And when we got to the door, I glimpsed over to the coffee table and I happened to see it. I almost wished I hadn't because it put me in a really hard place with that mom guilt. And I saw that agenda sitting there and we were at the door and I said to myself, Am I going to tell him that his agenda is on the table and rob him of life's opportunity to teach him a lesson that he needs to be responsible of his things and he needs to be organized? Or am I going to tell him it's there because I wanna save myself the tears and the drama and I wanna save him the hard feelings and the lesson that he forgot something and having to own up to it at school? So do I tell him, do I not tell him? Our rule is that you pack your own things, but my mom guilt really was tugging at my heartstrings. And I know many of you have probably been there. And if you've been there, I would love to hear in the comments when you get that mom guilt where you feel like you need to bail your kids out. Um, it's happened, I'm sure, to every single one of us. So at that moment, I decided I was gonna be strong. I was gonna do what I knew from my, you know, my education and my profession, what I needed to do for my child. So I didn't say anything. I just said, okay, boys, are we ready to go? Are you all set? Yep, we're ready, we're ready. Okay, off we went, we get in the car. We're about 10 minutes from home and he unzips his backpack to drink his water and he realizes that his agenda is not there and drama. All of a sudden we have, <gasps> mommy, my agenda's at home. 
Miss Hamilton's gonna be so mad at me. Can you go back, please, please? Can you go back, please? Can you go back? I know you can go back. And I said, unfortunately, Hudson, I can't go back because then we're gonna be late to school. And he just went on and on. Can you drop me off and go back? I know you have time. I know you have time. And in my heart, yeah, could I have gone home and got it? Probably, but I wasn't gonna do that. And so I, I stayed really without emotion, really calm, really matter of fact. That is the best way to help your kids learn lessons. Keep your emotions checked at the door. And I just said to him, Hudson, I'm very sorry that you forgot your agenda. I know how upsetting that is. Would you like me to go in while you tell Miss Hamilton and help you tell her, or would you like to do it on your own? Now he knew I wasn't gonna go home. He knew we had boundaries. He knew he could trust me because I stick to my word. But I wasn't gonna leave him there floundering, suffering. I wanted to help him learn a lesson and own up to it. So I was there to guide him if he wanted my guidance and to let him do it independently if he wanted to do it independently. He of course said, can you please park the car and come in and help me? And so he sniffled and made his way up, only six years old, up the stairs. And we went in to tell Miss Hamilton before school started what happened. And of course, like I told him in the car, she would say, it's okay, Hudson, mistakes happen. And so as I hugged him, I said, okay, you have a great day. Don't worry about it, let it go. And when we get home, we can talk about how you're gonna not forget things going forward. And he said, I already thought about it, mommy. I'm gonna write, pack my agenda every day on my morning chart so I don't forget. I said, I think that is an amazing idea. And sure enough, he came home, he wrote it on his chart, he had it set, and now to this day, he's 11 and he's maybe forgotten something once. He's very good at remembering the things he needs because it affects him and it doesn't affect me. So as a, if you were a helicopter parent, chances are, you would go the other route and you would tell your child that their agenda is on the table. You would avoid them having to be upset. You would avoid the tears. You would avoid the sadness and the bumps and the bruises to help keep them happy. But we rob them of learning life lessons. And so when we are a helicopter parent, we actually are doing our child a disservice, okay? The second type of parent we're talking about today is a snowplow parent. So you're either a helicopter or a snowplow, or you're neither, and that is fine too. Um, but most parents typically fall under one category until we start to learn positive discipline techniques, and then you just are middle ground and away you go. So snowplow parents are parents who literally plow the way for their kids. Instead of hovering like a helicopter, you plow the road so there's no bumps, hurdles or any obstacles to face. So you are clearing the way for them. The path is clear as can be so they don't have to worry about a thing. Here's what happens. When you snow plow and you clear that path, your child has no life skills. They lack skills in conflict resolution. They lack skills in how to self-manage. They lack skills in independence and responsibility. They lack skills in how to problem solve with friends, even in university years. And there was an amazing article a couple years ago from the ex-dean of Stanford, who said she'd never seen in our generation so many university students show up to university not knowing how to organize their studies, how to pack their bags, how to literally solve a conflict about who took whose peanut butter in the dorm room. We don't want that for our kids. We want our kids to know that life can be hard, but through those hardships is where we learn. Life can be hard and we're gonna fail and we're gonna fall down, but when we pick ourselves back up, we're stronger and we learn things and we become more resilient. And resiliency might be the number one thing we need to teach our kids, especially in today's world, especially with what we're living with right now in COVID. We need to be resilient and our kids need to know that we're resilient and we're teaching them resiliency skills. So we are either helicopter parents or snowplow parents. Maybe you're not either, but are you, that's a better way for me to phrase this, are you a snowplow or a helicopter? Do you hover to protect your kids from every single bump and bruise? Or do you plow the way to make sure that life is easy for them? What do you think? Think about your days, think about your parenting, think about how you interact with your kids, and then ask yourself, really ask yourself, 
Am I hovering or am I plowing? And I would love to know in the comments below. I hope this was helpful in bringing you some clarity, making you think about your parenting because awareness is key. Once we are aware of what's happening, we're aware that what we're doing is not working for us. It's not working for our kids. It's not working for our, our mental health and our sanity. Once you have that awareness, that's when you can finally start making change. That's when you say to yourself, I can't go on like this anymore. I don't wanna live my days with my kids feeling like everything's a grind. I wanna make change. So being aware of the type of parent you are and your parenting approach is really step one to starting to make these changes. So I hope this was helpful. Hashtag replay if you're watching it after, if you're watching it um, even on Instagram, I would love to know in the comments, are you a helicopter parent? Are you a snowplow parent? Anyway, have a great day and I look forward to hearing your answers.